Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with an updated guide for Abyss 90 for you newer players for the sixth year anniversary. I've had a lot of requests about this one. Uh, will I redo some of my old Abyss guides? Sure, we'll absolutely do it, and we'll try to do it with as many free-to-play characters as well as as much of the free gear that you get from the Dash Pass sixth anniversary event. So yeah, let's just jump into it. Let's talk about what characters we're using. So this is the team I'm using. Every character here is a free-to-play character. You can get Tamarin from the game's connections, and she's the best PvE character in the game. So I highly recommend picking her up, no matter what you're trying to do in Epic 7. She's just really that important. Take a look at her skill levels. We're going to be maxed out Shining Star and Song of the Forest to maximize our healing uptime. Our gear looks like this. I'm using Potion Vial, but feel free to use whatever artifact you want. For a soul weaver only really important things to have are the speed set on her so she could take as many turns as possible make sure you have any kind of health percentage ring and necklace right and then the boots speed as the main stat most of my stuff is just free gear dash pass gear free event gear things like that just like check-ins and whatnot for our tank it's going to be Roz in the front position this is the best abyss tank in the game and he is free Everyone has access to him. He is the main character of Epic 7. No reason not to have his specialty change unlocked. Simply clear episode 2. Level up the character. Skill everything up. Right? Artifact is going to be Arius. So that, that way he can really help tank for the team. And then similar story to Tamarin here. It's all just free gear. Just speed set. Main stat speed on the boots. Anything with health percentage here is fine. You don't need to be like crazy tanky effectiveness at 65 percent plus is highly recommended it will make your life so much easier that's probably the core stat i would say on the character is 65 plus per, uh, percent effectiveness as for damage dealers we're going to be using commander Lorena, and i want you to really take this in this character is probably the best abyss damage dealer in the game next to terran or guard this is one of the best boss dps characters in epic 7 and she is a free character through the game's connections she is a three star she's better than most of the five stars you will pull on this game for game modes like abyss so please do not neglect this character to really hammer this home how good she is i'm gonna try to clear this floor at level 50 here without my skill levels maxed out this is just the free ones that you get from stigma the character is not gonna be fully awoken right so we're gonna be missing six 12 percent attack plus a bunch of other base stats right and also my skill tree isn't even finished so this character is going to be massively underpowered compared to what she actually could be if i invested in her more but you'll see that she's going to go toe to toe with my other damage dealer sermia throughout this fight and probably even out damage that character as for the gear the bunch of free stuff that you get from the dash pass event and our highest daydream joker here and for our last character i've chosen serbia that you get for free through the game's expert hunt events but feel free to use any other damage dealer that you want in the slot of serbia basically any five star any four star whatever you want to play here just try to have it be a single target dps you get punished during the first phase of floor two if you use a lot of aoe attacks so do keep that in mind I originally tried to do this with Mercedes, but I kept getting punished because of all the AoEs that are in the character's kit. So I decided to go with Sarmia here for this. Again, bunch of free gear, dash pass gear, adventurous path gear, uh, and then the boots are like conquest points, stuff that you get from just playing the game's arena. So hopefully these stats aren't too crazy, nothing that you can't get. For the most part, it's just about getting the character unlocked, getting them to six stars and having all of their... Uh, abilities awakened all of their skills leveled up all right let's jump into it floor one is against greedy katie's here what you want to do is focus down the two spiders since they do pretty much all of the damage on the floor the faster you can kill them the better it's going to be for you you want to be pretty liberal with your skill usage for the first part here this first floor you just Kind of throw everything out there until the spiders are dead. We decided, by the way, to hold Raz's S2 because ideally you want to get in the habit when playing Abyss of not actually using his skill 2 unless you have 10 souls available. 
it's pretty much the best soul burn in all of Epic Seven for Abyss. So just get in that habit of holding it because you're gonna probably be using it a lot from Abyss ninety onward. So it's a good habit to develop. All right, so now we can use the soul burn on Raz here on his command strike. So this, what this does is going to be to give uh, immunity to Raz, defense break the target, then give immunity and call a dual attack from his highest attack character, which at this point should be Sermia because she has greater attack buff. Nice. See how much damage? That was just a huge, huge chunk of damage that we dealt there. Easily kill that. All right, now we're in a pretty good position because outside of that ultimate from Katie's, not really going to be any major damage to us. Normally, I'd soul burn here, but since we're not in any any danger now that the spiders are gone, we're just going to walk this crystal down and then we're going to hold all of our cooldowns, right? In order to go into the second floor with as many souls as possible, as many damaging cooldowns as possible. This will allow us to burst down those ads really, really easily. You can't close your eyes. Nice. I shall honor you with my presence. Alright, so once the crystal is down, we don't have to worry as badly about him getting like certain buffs from the crystal. I'll protect you. Yeah. So I'm gonna burn I burn that spiral breakthrough because it's still gonna be at full health, right? It's going to be back before this actual boss gets killed. Pretty much, Sermia's S3 is like the only cooldown we really want to use here. Just because she can reset it on demand as long as her S2 is available. You can see Lorena's just kind of schmoovin'. She's doing big damage. We can throw this out for free. Since we'll have it available again. Yeah, like I said, just walk in this Katie's down. S2, just because we already have all idle up, just top everybody off. Okay. See, so Spiral Breakthrough is already back again, and we're basically about to kill it. Alright, so here we go. Floor 2, stage 1 of 3. Basically, anytime you attack Tenebria, these two demons are going to push up. They make life problematic by hitting your team with a bunch of debuffs. So we want to focus them first. You can start off with going idle mode here to get attack buff. Kind of push our whole team up to the front and get ready to start doing some big damage. Be pretty liberal with your soul usage here. Because it's going to go away in a second. So I'm going to soul burn spiral breakthrough. Unfortunately, we missed the crit because my gear is not the best. You can see big, big damage here. Solber and Sermia. Alright, and then we use S1 here, and that'll pull Sermia. Kill that. So one down. Solburn. And sadly, no defense break. So now, if that we had left that target on Lorena there, if it didn't get cleansed by Tamarin, we would have potentially taken a lot of damage on Lorena. Potentially have lost her. Yeah. So like I said, just keep being liberal with your soul burns here, because in the next phase, you're just going to lose it anyway. You'll want to go into the second phase with some souls, but not too many, because it will get drained right away. Go for the dual attack chance. Should we get started? Take this. Let's fight together. I will continue my training. Right, Lorena just kind of wrecking everything right now. All right. So now for Raza's next turn, because Nightmare is available here, that defense breaks. Let's get a defense buff up to kind of offset that a little bit. 
We might cycle out of it with this Tamarin, but if that's the case, it's fine. Do keep in mind that as soon as Tenebria goes under 50%, she will use Nightmare again. So you might get in this really awkward situation where you trigger it twice. This might actually trigger considering the defense break. Yep. So that's going to trigger the Nightmare. Alright, so now we go to phase two. So she summons three illusions. One of Roz, one of Mercedes, one of Aether. Only one of these is real, right? You have to find the real one. It'll say reveal the truth at the start of one of these characters' turns. That's the character you have to focus down. The two fakes will just say be destroyed. So, since it's my turn first and I have no idea which one it is, I'm going to take a gamble that it's Mercedes. And I'm just going to attempt to focus her down until I know for sure who it actually is. Again, I'm going to be pretty liberal with my soul usage. Because once I believe it's Aether takes a turn, you're going to lose all of your souls. So you might as well. Alright, so it's not Raz. He says be destroyed. Aether is be destroyed. So it actually was Mercedes. So we got actually quite lucky. If you get unlucky and it's like Aether, I think Aether is the, the hardest of the three. Just restart, get to this point again, and just keep trying until you get better RNG. Alright, we might as well just use it because we're not going to be able to hold it. Not going to be able to set up any any kind of like soul shenanigans. So now we come back here to the third stage, which is against Spectre Tenebria. So Spectre takes less damage if she has debuffs. And she also heals if she has, uh, if anyone has debuffs at the start of her turn. But otherwise, this is pretty straightforward. It's just a straight shot. Basically, you're just trying to rush her down. It's kind of like a double-edged sword if she has, uh, the debuffs or not. See, big chunk there. She's gonna try and debuff us. Let's do this. Perhaps the most annoying thing that this character does is she throws down unhealable. But other than that, it's nothing too crazy. I will continue my training. We'll break through here, try and push her back. It probably won't go though. Oh, we did get a pushback. Nice. You can't close your eyes. Go away. Save that soul burn, I think, for Tamarin's S1 for the heal. Alright, so we're going to S2 into S3 with Sermia in order to actually pull everything out here. Like, pull all the unhealables off of her. Hmm. Yeah, I think we can go for this. Alright, so here's Endless Nightmare. This is the S3. Roz, luckily for us, has immunity there. We could heal him back up. Alright, we want to get our defense break uh, buff up here. Take as little damage as possible. I so say this is pretty much just we're walking we're walking her down with our two single target DPS. Could idle here. Get attack buff. And we can go Command Strike here. And then Spiral Breakthrough, and hopefully this pushes back. Nope, didn't get the pushback. It's alright, though. Get that Cleanse from Potion Vial, and then Lorena gets the kill with the assist from Cern. So there you go. Abyss, Floor 90, done completely with free-to-play units and free-to-play gear. If there's any help you still need, please let me know down in the comments below. If you found the guide helpful, as always, would appreciate a like or subscribe to the channel. It does help out a ton. Until next time, have a good one. Later.